Hello all. Now I know some of you will have seen the title of this and think to yourself that I haven't really watched this video. Um, why is it appear in my subscriptions or on my list of blogs or in Kate's Facebook or Twitter for the second time in a few days? Uh, there's a few reasons for that. A, I want to get it down from 27 minutes and B, also um, there was someone who I mentioned in the first one who didn't, turns out not want to be mentioned. Um, I'm not going to say who that was. Uh, they know who they are, uh, mainly because they messaged me about it. Um, and uh, so to that person, and I've already said sorry in, in like person and over WhatsApp uh, to that person. Just this is a quick video, so it's out there on the internet to this person that I apologise. Um, so this, not, for those who saw the video, this is going to be pretty much a repeat, slightly extended some bits, slightly narrowing down some other bits. I'm going to play my music a bit while I'm going on, so I've actually got just my iTunes open, so I don't have to worry about songs I don't like coming up, but I might still skip some songs anyway. But anyway, um, so yeah, I hope everything is all right with everyone, and the video that's still on YouTube for quite a while. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about um, a few things really. So obviously I've been in Lisbon for just over eight weeks now, uh, it'll be exactly two months on it's the 22nd, so some Saturday. Uh, which is funny, that's the day I'm going back to the UK for a day just to get more stuff. So I want my, like, stuff like my PS4, I want my more clothes because I've started running out of clothes. Like this, I mean, shirt, those who know me quite well. I have watched this since the other video, by the way. Uh, just seen, I don't think I've just been wearing the same t shirt for several days in a row. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I've lost my chain of thought. Yeah, um, basically, I've started running out of like new clothes. I came here with like four or five different sets of clothes and I uh, got through them all pretty quickly so I had to buy a few new ones. Um, so yeah, this is um, I'm also going with a few different colours in case you haven't noticed. Those who know me a long time know that I don't usually wear anything other than black or maybe purple. Um, like except for my red trainers. Uh, but if like on my social clothes I don't tend not to wear other stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's been nice to just experiment really. It's um, I've been, like I had my outfit like more than eight months ago now uh, and it's one of the things where I came out as trans like near it isn't it coming up to seven years to the day it'll be seven years on the 2nd of July and I just want to start being like like I've gone through this process to be to become female um, and I, I know it may not sound like it and I may not look like it um, get the long hair by the way I've just had a shower which is why my hair is um, wet um, but yeah, um, so yeah, it's just one of the things. But I just want to try and be like, I made all this effort to actually to become this. And although it's like, I feel a bit awkward wearing like more, I won't say revealing, but like more feminine clothes, for having Um I just want to, I don't know, I just want to like try new things. I'm in my thirties now. I turned thirty-five in just under three months, and I want to. Oh, no, thirty-five. Fuck yeah. Um, I just want to try new things. So I figured I'd just try new wardrobes. I'm wearing a lot of. Like these sort of like light colours. Granted, I'm in Lisbon, so light colours really help with the temperature. Black is not a good colour to have around here. Um, having said that, it is raining for the first time um, today, and it's actually been warmer in the UK than it has been here. Uh, on Saturday, when I go back to the UK, uh, I think it's due to be something like 32 in Lincoln, and it's only going to be 21 here in Lisbon. It seems crazy. It reminds me when I went up to Norway, uh, and it was only. Um, it was like 16 degrees there. It was only 10 in the um, it was 10 in the um, UK, even though it's much further south and close to the equator. I go weird places, and the temperature seems to follow me around. I bring the rich weather with me. It's a good song. It's a good song, but no. I've got it on a randomizer as well. So sorry about this. I realised this. Idea. In fact, what I'm going to do while I'm selecting this, I'm actually going to tell you the main crux of the um, of what's happened over the last few weeks. So basically, a few weeks ago at work, uh, because there were quite a few gaps between calls. I started writing a book about, um, I'm definitely not that far too uh, heavy, no, that was a cover, just to clarify, it wasn't this, the Great Showman soundtrack, it's a much better cover than, uh, oh come on, it's got to be a decent song at some point, come on, come on, yeah, that'll do, um, yeah, so basically, um, there's gaps between calls often, uh, so basically people fill the time however they want, some people play, like solitaire, some people read the news. I started writing a book because it's not one of the things. It's like one uh, something I've really enjoyed throughout like my working life is helping other people. So, like for example, when I was okay, a bit too loud, maybe. Be quite brutal about this. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, it's um, it's one of the things I've enjoyed helping people when I was at Odeon uh, and I 
I started in Greenwich. Um, I helped three out of the four people that I specifically mentored get promoted, um, and one of them would come in the unranked me if I was still there. Now, when I say help, the credit obviously all goes to them, because ultimately without their input, without their work, um, nothing would have happened, but I helped them anyway. But I really enjoyed helping people, and it's one of the things where I've sort of been a bit lost since I completed my transition. I didn't really know what to do in my life, uh, so much to the point where I ended up moving to another country, um, and 1,500 miles from home, give or take. Um, it's good though, I mean, I'm sort of enjoying this for the most part. There is still a bit of me that still wants to go home. Um, there's a, I'm not going to lie, there's a tiny bit of me that is thinking of not coming back on Saturday. So like going to the UK and not coming back. It's unlikely, I'll grant you. Uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so I decided to, you know what, I'm going to talk about, I did quite an unusual transition, I think, based on how it happened, how late I came out relatively to a lot of people, trans people I've met, so I came out when I was 27, um, and, and just a lot of new shit led me to that point, and I've sort of decided to write a book which will help people like, along the way, so like, obviously you hear all these people like, talk about like, advice for after the up, like, for example, like, what it's like, to, like, you go on YouTube and you can search post-MTF surgery, and you get loads of videos, um, like, of people explaining, like, oh, it's two years post off and all that shit. Uh, but you never really get anyone talking about it beforehand. So, like, for example, you go into a hospital, what do you expect? Like, what's going to happen on each day? So, um, obviously, those who read my blog will know I chronicled my time in hospital. Excuse me, a brief second, my mouth's a bit dry. Not paid advertising. Uh, sorry. Um, not quite dry. Um, but yeah, it's like people just, they don't really. Um, it's like, you don't really hear what goes on, like, for example, um, like, when I went into hospital, for example, um, I, I arrived on the Wednesday, I want to say I arrived on, um, I'm going to say Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, um, and, uh, basically they guide you through the city reception, waiting for your actual way to be admitted into the ward, which is usually about 6 o'clock, uh, p.m., and um, then you go for the paper, you just sit there, you don't really do a lot, and then all of a sudden they come in and do a little test and give you, quite frankly, the blandest chicken sandwich I've ever had in my life. No topping, just bread and chicken. Now, don't get me wrong, I love chicken. Chicken's awesome, but uh, no, just not on its own. It was just so, uh, um, uh, it was just sort of like, that's it was, it was just the most, it was just bland. It was just tasteless, but it's, it's one of those things as a set menu, you, like 24 hours before surgery, you only allowed to eat certain things, and that was the, the lesser of the evils that were on there. And then, come the morning, or oh, you go through, oh dear, even just thinking about it, oh, it just horrifies me. An enema. I had quite a few of those while I was in hospital, but I didn't expect them going in. I knew one was coming, uh, but you don't really know what to expect, what it feels like. And I, I make no lie when I say it feels like a volcano going off in your bowels. Uh, I, I realise this is quite heavy content, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so stuff like that, like things that people don't know, and it's also stuff like um, choosing who you come out to first is really important. So, like the first person you tell, it's a bit like the first person you have sex with, it's like that, that no matter what you do, that will always be the first person. Um, and mine happened to be a girl who I renamed the book as Molly. Now, there's, they, there's only two people in the book that I name, actually name, and they are Dr. Richard Curtis, who was my doctor in London, who I got all my homage and everything from, and Dr. Phil Thomas, who did my surgery down in Brighton. They're the only two people that I mention in, by actual name. Everyone else I give a, a false name to, which in a few cases is pretty similar to their actual name, but fuck it, what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, I started talking about the time I, um, I was about 16 at the time, and um, I was deciding I really wanted to start, start telling people, because at the time I was thinking it's going to be, um, I was going to come out when I was 21, uh, not come out, sorry, transition when I was 21, so I wanted to start telling people, because uh, it was only four years off, which at the time felt like a lifetime, because you think when, when you're that age, like four years is a fifth of your lifetime, when you uh, or a quarter of the eye time, sorry, at that age. Um, so it's quite a long time to wait, relatively. Anyway, so I told her, um, I didn't really even know her that well, and um, within two days, two entire schools knew. 
Um, because everyone else decides to vote to each other. If you're from Lincoln, you'll know what I mean when I say NK and RP and how close they are to, to each other. For those who aren't, you can kick a um, you can kick a football from one school into the other. That's how close they are. Um, and that's not even someone who's good at football. It's like someone who's just very bang average like like me. In fact, being bang average is probably touting my own skills to be better than they actually are. I'm terrible at football. Everyone who's ever seen me play football will tell you I'm terrible at football. Um, but um, anyway. Um, so yeah, it made me really question why I told her in the first place, and this is that's one of the bits of advice: choose carefully. I mean, obviously, a lot of people might tell their family first, but I know a lot of others who chose a friend first, and I don't think me and Molly were even like friends. And in the book, I've used a quote from the film Love Simon, which is basically um, it sums up the situation quite well. Where I basically go, I can't remember the exact wording, but. Um, I'm supposed to be the one who decides, the one who tells how and when to tell people. And Molly took that from me. Um, so the book's about 45 pages at the moment, A4, uh, in small font. So I'm sort of at a, a, like a barrier at the moment where I'm sort of stuck to what to write. Uh, but anyway, the point where I'm sharing this is, basically the last few weeks I've had a few mental health problems with it because talking about certain incidents with... Uh, a girl called Maz and another girl who in the book I called Jane. Um, it was just very painful mentally and set me back quite a lot. It got to the point where I went into work and I was absolutely horrible to be around. And to those who see this that I work with, it's I, I'm so sorry. Um, basically, it got to the point where I started using this hat um, to tell people if it was safe to approach me or not. No, don't worry, I love this fucking hat. Go Flames. I'm hoping to actually go watch them later in the year, but I've got to wait for the actual fixtures to come out. Sidetrack. I, those who have never watched me before, I sidetrack quite a lot. Um, but anyway, so I was basically saying to people, if I work backwards like this, um, obviously putting it on properly, then safe to approach, like everything's fine. Um, yeah, no issues whatsoever. But if I am wearing it like this, and there's no uh, reason for me to be wearing it like this, like there's no light shining in my eyes, so if I'm outside and the sun's out, yeah, obviously, I'm using it for the tactical purpose. But if I was sat like this, it was basically a sign to everyone that don't approach. It's, uh, or I'm going through something, uh, so just leave me to it. Um, take that now. Um, so yeah, I was a horrible person to be around for a, whole, for a solid week or so, and I took it out. And I was just, I was a dick. Um, it's one of the things I'm happy to admit it, it's what I'm, I don't, Sometimes it's like, especially with like those sort of things, I don't deal with my emotions well. Um, most of the time I'm fully in control. Um, like, I don't really smile a lot. Uh, you'll notice during this video that I don't even blink a lot, uh, which is something I actually went through the first video. Uh, but the thing is now, just for like the first one, now that I'm thinking about that, I don't blink that often, I actually really want to blink. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, put something down a bit of a dark path uh, that I... Uh, it's, it resulted me going off social media for a few days, uh, like a week in the end. Um, and even then, and even now, I've posted something on Facebook and Twitter um, over the last few days just to update friends with I'm okay because the status I did leave at the time was a bit like. Uh, just, it wasn't very. I didn't like. I, was, I mean, I did make it clear I wasn't thinking of suicide or anything, but it was very. Like, just like, I need time to myself, need time in my own head. Um, and the next day, I uh, me and people from work were going out to a local bowling alley just to have a good time on a Friday night. We got through another week, um, and we just like it was a chance to properly bond with the team. I've not really taken the time to bond with most of them. There's like one or two people that I was, that I was close to. Well, I say close contextually compared to the others I was close to. I wouldn't say I was close to them. I don't really know anyone in that group that well, and it's for my own doing. Really, I tend to keep myself to myself. Um, just experience more than anything else. Um, uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, I was walking along talking to a girl who, this isn't the girl that I spoke to, who I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but she's still uh, someone who, I have, who I'm not entirely sure she wants mentioning my name, so I won't. Uh, but basically I was talking to her about what, was go what happened with Maz, and um, it... It finally just got to me. Everything just collapsed. I collapsed. Well, not physically collapsed, but it's just everything just went just like tunnel vision. Just like I just I just had to get out of that situation because uh, my my eyes started welling up 
Uh, I stopped crying in the middle of the street. Um, now a few people know knew at the time what I was going through properly. Um, but this was just that time where I just I wasn't having a good time at all mentally. Uh, I was just done. I was checked out. Um, and it was nice just to it was just I just needed to get away from that situation. I just needed to get away. Unfortunately, um, this girl who um, oh, I want to mention her by name, but I'm pretty certain she doesn't. I'm not entirely sure she wants to be mentioned by name. But she followed me, made sure I didn't just go off and didn't do anything. I wouldn't have done anything anyway. I might have gone home, but I wouldn't have not hurt myself or anything. I'm not that sort of person. Um, but yeah, she um, she really helped me through it. Um, and without her. That was the step, first step to recovery, really, because it was like she said to me, "What happened with Maz wasn't my fault." Admittedly, I didn't help what happened. I'm not going to say what happened just to clarify, because even in the book, I don't say specifically what happened towards the end. Um, but yeah, so I sort of need to hear that. It was good. <coughs> See, excuse me. It was good to. Um, it was good to sort of hear from someone else that, like, yeah, it may be partially my fault, yeah, but it wasn't all my fault, and I just needed that, so I was sort of like, okay, let's go to, let's go join everyone else. And then I got talking to a, um, one of the guys from the group at the, uh, at the table, and they said, where did you disappear to? And I just went, oh, I was just telling um, the, the girl about what happened with Maz, and I started going again. Um, so, yeah, fortunately, uh, this guy... Bless him, didn't know what to do. He sort of, you could tell he was panicking. Uh, but fortunately, now the other end was at the table was a girl who um, I'm not going to mention my name. She knows who she is. Uh, but she came down the other end of the table, really helped me through it, like solid. She was sat with me for solid 10, 15 minutes, really helped me through it. And it's um, so yeah. Um, I don't want to go any further than that because what I said in the first video caused a few issues. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But to that person, it was that much appreciated. You helped me on like this was the like the thing with the other girl was a step, but this was the first major step. It's like it made me actually feel uh, not not worthy of anything, but it's just like I didn't, I didn't feel as guilty about everything afterwards. So it was great. It was one of the things where no matter what else happens, this person will always be. I'll always be thankful to the person for that. Um, I'm gonna. I almost said something then. I had to stop myself. Um, I have all those faces where you can tell if I know I've said something to which I'll just sort of like panic like this and I'll just start to change subject quickly, uh, which is what one of the things I did in the other video. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, but yeah, so um, over the next week, try to be better, try to um, try to be more upbeat, try to not even take my hat with me to the desk or always constantly wear it backwards. I think I've turned it back, for, uh, back forwards once and that was on Thursday when I got a bit angry about something. and. Again, I wasn't a good friend towards the end of last week. I was, I was, it was one of the things where I sort of focused on myself too much and I didn't focus on friends enough. Um, and it almost ruined some friendships. Thankfully, I've been, thankfully they've, so, they've recovered since then. At least I think so anyway. I've had a conversation with... Excuse me. Yes, I like all these songs, but it's like you want to just say... Um, that's a good shout, actually. That's a good shout. Um, so, yeah, it's just one of the things where it's just... It's, I thought some of the friendships that I'd ruined were unrecoverable. Thankfully, it's turned out not to be the case. Um, and just building step by step, I'm going to take, I'm going to just gradually build my way back in. Uh, just like not, just let it go at its own pace. Just see what happens. Um, uh, but before I go any further, I just want to thank the friends that put up with me over the last week, the ones that aren't at work. And I know these people are all cool with me mentioning them, so I'm actually going to mention these people by name. So, first of all, Jess. Uh, Jess is amazing. Uh, it's like one of the things I don't really, I don't really see that often. We started working together in 2015 at Odeon. We started at the same day. And since then, uh, we haven't actually worked together since the end of 2015. Like, I think New Year's Eve, that year was our last day working together because I went on to a different Odeon. Um, and she has always been my rock. She is always one of those people if I need motivation she's good she's good to give it to me she's a bit slow responding to sometimes but oh Chris is by the way I love you Jess <laughs> stop talking my mouth gets me in a lot of trouble um but anyway um so yeah she's my work she's one of the few people in the, in like that I know of that actually seems genuinely happy to see me whenever I whenever um whenever um she does like I've, she's literally run across the Odeon to hug me at one point it's like it's good to have a friend like that you just need someone who is happy to see you every now and then 
Um, then we got Sarah, um, who, <laughs> if I shared the story of how, how me and her met, you would be like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so we, like, I've probably spoken more to her in the last like, week and a half than we have in the previous like three years of our rest of our friendship combined, except when we've seen each other in person, obviously. Um, Sarah is awesome. Um, got so much time for her. Um, she makes me laugh, and uh, we had a solid like hour and a half chat on Friday night. Um, in between, before I went to a party, and after a certain other incident, which I'm not going to mention on here, but again, those at work know what I'm talking about. Um, I just sat for, for, for like an hour and a half. I just got what's that message? Um, so for a solid um, hour and a half, um, and um, like we were talking about our mutual issues with friends, um, and. It was good, it was good to talk it out, and uh, I think I hope I helped her out with it, but yeah, Cicero is a good egg, and then there's Charlie. Charlie is probably my, um, not my oldest friend, uh, is in my longest serving, I've got someone I've known since I was four years old, I know someone's followed me for 30 years, I don't know how, um, but yeah, I've known Charlie since, no, sorry, 2005, sorry, so I've known her 14 years, I'm not sure what I said the first time around, but anyway, excuse me. Not paid advertising. Although, Pepsi Max, if you are interested, I get through about two of these a day. It's not one thing for most of my adult life. Anyway, um, to get Charlie. Charlie is one of those people she grounds me quite a lot. It's Charlie's not afraid to tell me I'm wrong when I am wrong, and I am wrong quite a lot. She's one of those. I was talking to her on one night last week, um, and the situation I was talking to her about. She just turned around and said, so just to summarise, this happened, this happened, this happened, you did this, this happened, this happened, this happened. And I went, yeah, that's all right. And then she went, went don't take this the wrong way, but you're wrong. Just straight out, no, flat out, just wrong. And I was like, what? Um, and she just explained why I was wrong. And I was sort of like, yeah, you need a child who likes to tell you you're wrong occasionally. And I, 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 I don't have many like people I consider like great friends, uh, but those three are probably my three. I want to say best friends, but it's a bit weird saying best friends when I don't don't really talk to them uh, that often. Uh, like Charlie, I'll talk to her every like few weeks. Uh, Jess, I don't talk to her that often. Or I'd like to be more, and I say so. We don't we really haven't spoken for a while, but. Um, what's the thing? So like, what's our messages from me? Yeah. Yeah, so just um, find those people in your life who make you feel like you're appreciated. So find like people like Jess, Sarah and um, Charlie and just get them there. Um, so yeah, so I'm still sort of writing the book. I'm a bit stuck at the moment because I'm not entirely sure where to go now. Because I've written all the, bit, the autobiographical bits uh, that I want to write. I'm just trying to think of the actual advice to give now. Um, I've put a, bit, a few bits of advice in there, but I want to make it a bit actual advice because I don't want it to come across as just basically me, who, let's face it, is a nobody. Um, I don't have that many followers on Twitter, I don't have that many like, uh, I don't have that many followers on Instagram, I don't have that many subscribers on here. Um, but yeah, so I just want to um, I'm continuing it, but I'm sort of stuck at the moment, so we'll see where it goes. Um, I say, even if it just goes on my blog eventually, it'll be something. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to end this video by talking about one of my favourite parts about being in Portugal, and that is that I get to travel around New areas a lot. So basically, I have. I said there's a bit of a deviation from everything else. But basically, I have a postcard collection. So everywhere I have ever been outside the UK, I have a postcard. Um, so I'm going to show you like some like. So there's my Milan ones. I didn't wasn't a big fan of Milan to be fair. Um, I've also got some Barcelona ones, some Tromso ones. The random time I went to Ibiza, because obviously me. You've heard the type of music I listen to, it's not really our beef style, is it? Uh, um, yeah, just all sorts of uh, Like, since I went to Lisbon, I've been to City. No one's entirely sure how to pronounce this. Um, like, being English, I just pronounce it as it said, so I say Um Obviously, the Germans are, some of the Germans I work with are called Stubel. I've called it called Setibal. Uh, I have no fucking idea. Even the locals didn't seem to know. So, fuck it. Um, so, what else have we got here? Um, then I got a few from Lisbon, um, which is cool. Then my, probably my favourite postcard I actually have because look how awesome this is. So it's one of those ones where you hold it at different angles and it changes. Oh, fucking up, it cost me a euro. That's great. I'm easily pleased. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because the other day I went to a beautiful area called Sintra. Um, it's about, I want to say, 15 miles west of Lisbon, uh, and it is just stunning. It's, um, it's, oh, hair in my mouth here. It's one of the bad things about having, having um, long hair. I've noticed whenever I'm chewing gum, hair will always find its way to my mouth. Or wind can be blowing in that direction, yet hair would somehow, somehow still be getting Go away! What's that? <laughs> it's fine. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, Sintra is beautiful. It's a really old place. It's um, stunning. I want to go back there really soon uh, because there's that much uh, stuff that I really want to um, really want to see again. So I only got a chance to see this castle. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see that. But if you go to my Instagram, uh, which is kjackson84, you'll see some photos of the Mount Dubai and a video from the top of the uh, top of there. So the view is stunning. Um, but unlike the other day, where I originally recorded this, and I said. Um, I said numerous times that I'm going to leave it here. I am actually going to leave it here. Um, I'm going to try and upload more content when the next football season starts. Uh, because ultimately, most of my 217 subscribers at the time of uploading are um, only joining because of the football. So I want to try and get to record a few more games. I definitely want to get to record a sporting game because they're the team I've been to the most while I've been here. I'm hoping to go up for a trip to Porto at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm actually going to leave it here. I'm definitely going to leave it here this time. Goodbye.